What's good, guys? It is your girl, Maria Bavaratani, and I am back with another video. Video. <laughs> so, guys, if you are new here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what other videos you would like to see from me. So, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be talking about what it's like to have an invisible illness and have a handicap sticker. Now, when you think about invisible illness, like, what do you what do you what what comes to mind let me know down below down below but when i think about invisible illness i think about somebody who looks good on the outside you can't tell anything is wrong with them and there is suffering on the inside now about a year and a half ago i was at my lowest point i you know was in and out the hospital i couldn't stay a month out the hospital like literally every single month i was in the hospital my hemoglobin you know would constantly stay at a level five um doctors didn't know what to do i could not get blood transfusions anymore because you know i have maxed out on them um i got too many while oh excuse me i got too many when i was a child and it's affected me in my adulthood so now i can't unfortunately get any more blood transfusions so i had to drop out of school school is something that i loved I, i'm studying fashion merchandising and you know i always wanted to be a retail buyer and it, it it broke my heart when i had to drop out of school because this illness you know really decided that it wanted to take over and um <laughs> you know during my, my time off, God, you know, told me I should do YouTube. And he told me, you know, you need to tell your story. And here I am telling you guys what I've been through, what I'm currently going through. And, you know, what it's like to have this godforsaken illness and look okay on the outside. So, not too long ago, probably about 2016, my doctors um, told me I should get a handicap sticker. Just because my hemoglobin has been so low and walking small distances, I had my heart rate go from 0 to 100 and 2.5 and, you know, I was always tired and, you know... I just needed to park closer. And even to this day, you know, I try not to use my handicap sticker if I feel like I don't need it. And so I went and got it. And I've had my handicap sticker for about two years now. It's going on three. And um, one day I was at Food Lion. And I'm in the grocery store. Now, mind you, this. The, I, I saw this lady she this old lady she was struggling to get something at the bottom shelf and I was like oh ma'am do you need that like do you need me to help you she's like yeah yeah so she got it whatever me and my mom were shopping we, and we um go to checkout she's at checkout too we go to the car I'm parked in the handicap spot and she's gonna say oh it'd be you young people that be stealing their their um parents handicap sticker and using it you're fraud you're not sick you're not that that and mind you my mom was in a car and she went off my mom was like you don't know what kind of what she's fighting with on a daily basis you don't have to be old to have a handicap sticker and calling her fraud is just not right and blah 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 and it just you know it broke my heart just to like see you know if people can't see that there's something physically wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really sad to think that, you know, I had to have crutches or I had to be in a wheelchair or I have to, you know, be limping every time I get out the car because I had to worry about what people were going to say or think. And even I, even to this day, sometimes I could be in so much pain, at like an eight out of eight, going to the emergency room or um, coming home from something or I just got treatment or blah, blah, blah. And there'll be a handicap spot open. And I still won't take it just because I don't want people 
to be mad at me. I don't know. I just don't like when people are mad at me or think that I'm lying about something. And, you know, it's something that I'm working on. It's something I have to work on within myself and, you know, know that, you know, that person has their own issues going on. But it's like it's hard because, you know, that doctor, the doctor gave me the handicap sticker for a reason and he knew that I needed it. And then another doctor even offered me another one. Because he saw how much that I needed it. You know, guys, having a low hemoglobin is terrible. It is the most terrible thing ever. And to, and to chronically be there, too, is even another situation. You get what I'm saying? Just having to prove to other people on a daily that you're sick is just annoying. It's just annoying, you know? You look fine. Like, are you sure you're sick? Like, you're laughing, you're on your phone, you're doing this, you're doing that. Like, it's really, really freaking annoying. And I know, you know, I'm not the only one that goes through this. And, you know, I know there's other people that are out there. But I'm telling you guys my story. And I'm so thankful for you too because I get to tell you guys, you know, the raw, ugly truth of sickle cell that people tend not to not to look at or just tend to just turn their eye to and it's really really frustrating just because you know if they can't see it they don't believe it so I'm learning that you know I was given this handicap sticker for a reason and obviously I need it if two doctors suggest it you know not just one person suggested it and um I'm thankful that, you know, the doctors see my pain and understand that, you know, this is something that I need. And without it, who knows where I would be, you know. But I can't live off of other people's fear anymore or what other people think about me. So I will use it. Till I can't use it anymore. You get what I'm saying? If you are a person out there who has a handicap sticker and people look at you like, what are you doing? Screw them. Screw them. But there are a lot of people out there who do abuse it for other people. Like, there's a lot of people out there who don't need a handicap sticker, who have a handicap sticker. Like, come on now. Like, and I know them personally. You don't need a handicap sticker. Like, you're just abusing it so you can park closer to the entrance. Like, and it's like those people that mess it. It's always going to be somebody that's going to mess it up for somebody who really needs it. You are somebody who don't have, who doesn't have a chronic illness. You know, think twice before you say anything because, and I, just the other day, even before the, uh, f after the food line situation, another person was like, you know you parked in the handicap in the section, right? And I was like, yeah. He was like, you gonna get towed? I said, no, I have a handicap spot. I have a handicap sticker. He was like, you don't need no handicap sticker. And I said, you don't know what I need. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just have to clap back the ignorance and don't let other people's ignorance affect your day, <laughs> okay? Just don't let other people's ignorance affect your day. And you just have to live for you because... Nobody else is going to live for you besides yourself. So, with that, I'm going to close out this story time. And I hope you guys liked it. Um, Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me, Brianne Bertani. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And help me spread awareness to sickle cell disease all over. And love you guys. See you next time.